the first uh, the first thing to consider is you know why is it important to prepare a bank reconciliation? Um, we recommend you prepare bank reconciliations on a monthly basis. Uh, the purpose of the bank reconciliation is to re reconcile cash between the bank statement and the uh, business's accounting records. Most of the time, journal entries uh, will be required to make sure the organization's accounting records are reconciled to the bank statement. Um, the reconciliation provides the readers an accurate view of the organization's cash on hand at a given date. Um, depending on the differences between the bank statement and the accounting records, um, the organization's cash account could be uh, materially understated or overstated. Um, so it's very important that you do this on uh, a regular basis for most organizations, uh, at least monthly. Most organizations also have more than one cash account, so it's important to prepare a bank reconciliation for every single account. Um, so one of the questions is why will there be differences between the bank reconciliation or between the bank statement and uh, the cash accounts in the accounting software. So the first reason, the most common reason would be omissions. Those are transactions that appear in the bank statement but haven't been recorded in the accounting software. These would be things like missing receipts, interest paid, uh, bank fees, NSF checks, uh, like a bounced check that you receive. Um, another common reason would be timing differences. That would include things like uh, outstanding checks, checks that you wrote to, uh, to a business that haven't yet been cashed by that business, or uh, deposits that came in and uh, you recorded in the accounting software, or they hit the bank statement and you haven't recorded in the accounting software. The other thing, uh, this doesn't happen all that often, but it can happen, would be errors. Um, this can be either on the bank side or it could be on the accounting software side. You know, and some of the most common things that, that we see, you know, as customers bring us in their, their records to help them reconcile where they're having issues. Um, in today's world, there's a lot of uh, automatic payments, things like that, that come out, um, you know, where a customer may forget just to write it down, um, or it came out earlier than they were expecting. Um, there's a lot of timing things like that with, with the the automatic ACH uh, payments. So to get started, what you'll need to begin is a, a copy of the bank statement that you're looking to reconcile and uh, the cash account report from your accounting software. Um, so when you get those two things, then we can get started. Um, the first step, once you have all the information you need, is to compare the balances between the bank statement in the cash account detail. So when you're looking at a bank statement, this is a pretty simplified version, but it'll look something like this. Um, it'll have the uh, last statement balance, um, the amount of credits, the amount of debits, and uh, the ending statement balance for this month. Down here you'll see all of the different uh, transactions that hit the account. Um, one of the things to remember is when you're looking at these, um, if you're a board member or a committee, <laughs> if you're on like a finance committee or in a finance capacity, um, one of the things you're going to want to make sure when you get the bank reconciliation is that you also get a copy of the bank statement, which will have uh, copies of deposits and uh, checks that have cleared during the month. The next thing you'll need, which we just talked about before, so the next thing you'll need is the cash account detail from your accounting system. Um, this is kind of a, a sample of what it might look like. Uh, this will have all of the transactions that are recorded in the accounting software for the cash account that we're trying to reconcile. Um, so these will be the different uh, transactions that are recorded by the organization during the month with the ending cash balance. Now, as you'll notice, the two totals don't match up right now, and that's what we're going to work on reconciling. The, the statement balance from the checking account is 52188 while the uh, 
balance in the cash account on the accounting records is 58,486. So the first step, the first step would be to actually go back, sorry. So the first step would be to make a tick mark next to all of the transactions that match on both the bank statement and the cash account detail. So as you can see on uh, June 4th, we had a deposit for 3,592 showing on the bank statement. We also have that same deposit showing up in uh, the cash account detail. Same thing for check number 104, uh, the EFT payment on June 10th, uh, the online deposit on June 18th. All of those are showing up both on the bank statement as well as the cash account detail from the accounting software. <clears throat> so the next step would be to make some tick marks for the transactions that don't show up on both the bank statement and the cash account detail. So we're going to go through here and make some tick marks. So the first one would be this deposit on uh, June 30th. Um, this check number 105 looks like that might be uh, an outstanding check. Um, you'll notice uh, C right here, an online deposit showing up in the bank statement and not showing up over here. Um, you go to D, that was interest paid if you have an interest bearing account. That was interest paid on in the bank statement, not showing up in the uh, cash account detail. Item E is a bank fee, that's a commonly missed one. Um, F is a NSF check, and G over here is check number 106 on the 19th. That amount over here is showing as 7,005, over here it's showing as 7,050. So we need to figure out if that's a uh, an error on the bank side or if that's an error in the accounting software side. So the next step would be to calculate the adjusted bank statement balance. So if you remember uh, A right here, this deposit, this was a deposit in transit for $2,220. Um, so we see that over here, we recorded it in the accounting software as a deposit on June 30th, but when we took it to the bank, it didn't make the bank statement, so it'll show up you know, the first or second of July for the next month. So we have to make sure that we record that in the bank reconciliation. The next one, it looks like is an outstanding check, check number 105 for $910. So that one was recorded as a check, uh, a re reduction to cash on June 12th. That's uh, most likely a check that we sent out to a vendor and the vendor has not yet uh, cashed the check or submitted the check for payment on their side. So again, in July, we expect that will uh, hit the bank statement. So the adjusted closing balance on the bank statement side of the bank reconciliation is $53,498. Now we're gonna work on uh, reconciling the um, cash account balance. Hopefully when we make these adjustments, those numbers will be the same. So if we go back a couple of screens and look at missing receipts, there was an online deposit on June 29th for $1,000. Doesn't show up anywhere over here, so we need to, we need to make that uh, change on the cash account balance reconciliation side. So we add that in here, $1,000. The next one is interest paid for $107. If we go back to the bank statement and take a look at the bank statement, it looks like interest was paid on June 30th for $107. Generally, that's what you'll see at the end of the month. You'll, uh, it, it could be the end of the quarter. You'll have interest paid to the account you won't know what that number is, and so that'll be a common bank reconciliation issue. The next one is bank fees. Uh, lots of banks charge a fee for the checking account. 
So this one is fifty dollars. Um, that was uh, letter E. Go back to the bank statement. Um, you'll see that on uh, June seventeenth, a fifty dollar fee was charged. Um, a lot of times that'll get missed because depending on the type of checking account that you have, you might not know exactly what the bank fee will be on a monthly basis. Uh, the next one is for $6,000. That's a returned check. Um, so if you go back to the bank statement, we'll see over here that uh, this NSF check number 2748 uh, hit our account. What happened there is uh, one of one of our customers sent us a check for $6,000. We deposited the check. Uh, the check was returned because it didn't, uh, the customer didn't have sufficient funds. So the bank reduced that amount from uh, the ending balance. So now we need to go back and we need to reduce uh, the amount of cash that we're showing in uh, the cash account detail by $6,000. The final difference that we're seeing is in G. So it looks like the bank was correct here. The check was for 7,050. Looks like we accidentally transposed the last two numbers and, and typed it in as $7,005. So we need to go back and uh, reduce uh, the cash account by $45. So when you use the uh, unadjusted closing balance of 58,486, Add the missing receipts and the interest paid, subtract the bank fees, the return checks, and then subtract that $45 for the error. You come up with a final balance of $53,498. Put the two next to each other. Um, you see that they both agree, $53,498. The unreconciled amount is zero. Um, if it wouldn't be zero, you need to go back and and continue looking and figure out what else you need to change. Um, <clears throat> when those numbers agree, uh, when you have the bank statement and the cash account detail reconciled, then you need to post the necessary journal entries to make sure that the, the cash account balance in the accounting software is correct. <clears throat> so the first two, the A and the B, that was an outstanding check in a deposit in transit. Those don't need a, a journal entry because those are timing differences that'll sort themselves out in, uh, in the subsequent period. Um, see the missing receipts of $1,000. Uh, you're gonna need to make a journal entry to uh, debit cash and credit accounts receivable. Um, so you're gonna add to the cash account on the, uh, on the balance sheet. You're gonna reduce accounts receivable. Uh, the interest received of $107, again, you're going to debit cash, so you're going to increase cash by $107, and you're going to go to the income statement and increase uh, interest income by the same amount. The missing bank fees of $50, this one you're going to increase the uh, bank expense on the income statement, and you're going to subtract the $50 from the cash account on the balance sheet. Uh, the non-sufficient funds check, of six thousand uh, dollars, you need to reduce accounts receivable on the balance sheet by the six thousand dollars, and you're going to have to uh, reduce cash by the six thousand dollars, and probably send out another invoice. Uh, check number one hundred six. That's an error correction of forty five dollars. In this case, we need to uh, increase the accounts receivable at forty five dollars, and uh, take that $45 away from cash both on the balance sheet. So a couple of important things when reconciling. Um, it all seems pretty intuitive and, and, and makes sense to, to some people. Um, you know, what we've seen is that you know, sometimes they don't start with the same balances. So what you want to make sure you're looking at is that the starting balance that you have in your, your accounting software and the starting balance that the statement state, states match up. Um, we've seen where people just go through the, the line items and everything that happened, and they, they've never actually reconciled to what the bank statement states. And so we always want to make sure that we're starting with the same exact numbers. If not, then you need to go back to a previous statement until they do line up, and then you can move forward from there and re-reconcile everything. Um, 
couple other things that, that we see happen um, from time to time. You know, Mike mentioned that the that there are errors. Uh, the way that most banking software works today is there are computers that are actually reading the checks. It's not um, an individual. And sometimes there are misreads on the dollar amounts. So don't just make the assumption that it's incorrect on the um, bank side or on the on the accounting software side. It could be either way. Um, we've seen both happen. It's also very important that uh, bank reconciliations, like I mentioned, are performed every month. As Mark alluded to, if they're not performed every month, then you're gonna have to keep going back month to month until the last time that it was reconciled, or else cash is gonna continue, could continue to get understated or overstated um, by an increasing amount. And when readers of your uh, financial statements look at the balance sheet, you know, cash could be off by a significant amount and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't provide an accurate picture. Um, especially important to boards when they're trying to budget, you know, for the next year, figure out if uh, <clears throat> they have enough money for certain programs or to pay their bills. So, um, like I said, it's imperative that these are performed uh, on a regular basis, at least monthly, and for every single cash account that you have. Um, you know, make sure you get the, uh, the original bank statement from the bank along with the, with the copies or pictures of the original checks. Um, as we talked about in the fraud uh, portion, you know, a lot of these nonprofits or small businesses use QuickBooks and, um, you know, those, those QuickBook records can be uh, manipulated fairly easily. So make sure you get copies of the, of the checks when you're, doing these bank statements. And the other thing that, that we've seen um, with journal entries is uh, some organizations have used journal entries to force reconciliation. And so if they can't figure out in a very short period of time what the diff why there's a difference, they just run a journal entry to fix it, to make it look like our rec the bank records match the accounting software record. And so anytime you're writing or doing a journal entry, you want to make sure that you know exactly why that journal entry is being entered. And it's not just to force balance the accounts. Yeah, a lot of times that will show up as, uh, at least in QuickBooks, as an uh, income statement expense at the bottom of the income statement that says, ask my account. And <laughs> um, a lot of times you do dig in and ask the accountant, it's like Mark said, they were forcing uh, the cash account and the accounting software to match up to the bank statement without performing a bank reconciliation. Um, question is, uh, how long should it take reconciliation and what can you kind of expect the day of reconciliation? Um, you know, it obviously depends on uh, how accurate the records have been added throughout the month. Um, it depends on how many items go through the account. You know, so if it's an account like our example here where there's six items, someone should be able to reconcile that in 15 to 20 minutes tops. Um, if you're talking about a fairly complex account that has a lot of ins and outs, has a lot of hands in the, in the cookie jar, for lack of a better term, where there are you know, multiple people writing checks, uh, multiple, multiple people making payments, deposits, things like that, it could take some time because you're gonna have to gather that information up because more than likely it's not in the accounting software um, at first glance. So in that scenario, yeah, you probably will need a couple of days to go through everything. If everything is, the record keeping is very good, um, most of the time it shouldn't take very long. I can give you an example of an organization that that we spent with, I mean, they had to go back three years and redo all of the reconciliations three years moving forward. It was probably a 40 to 50 hour project to re-reconcile everything. Um, so the question is, uh, do we have any horror stories or anything uh, as far as misreconciliations? Um, you know, we had one situation with, with a, a customer that we worked with who had been, um, from day one, had been 
just doing journal entries to force balance their, their reconciliation. Um, they didn't recognize um, how far off they were for about three years. Um, and then the, we, we ended up finding that they were about $10,000 off from the bank statement. Uh, we probably spent about 40 hours with them going back to the very beginning um, and going through every single, redoing every single reconciliation. Um, you know, their cash on hand was, was quite substantially different than what the bank statement was saying. And, and so you know, the, to fix it, they were just writing journal entries to kind of make it match. And um, the journal entries just kind of exponentially grew over time. And uh, so they're, they're, they were off. And so we had to, um, we spent about 40 hours with them to get everything back to square. You know, some of the, some of the issues that can arise, you don't prepare bank statements on a regular basis, uh, like Mark talked about a little bit there. You know, your your cash on hand could be a lot less um, than what you think it is, especially if, as a board, you're not reviewing the bank reconciliations on a monthly basis. We've seen instances where a board thought that they had uh, a certain amount of money on hand, and you know, then a, a certain month they start uh, receiving notices that their account is, has been overdrawn and they can't understand why and that's because they were not receiving bank reconciliations and um, you know the person in charge of accounting was uh, forced reconciling the bank statements to the, uh, the cash account detail and you know as a board uh, you know you're responsible uh, you have a fiduciary responsibility to make certain that uh, the organization is financially sound. And one of those, one of the easiest ways uh, to make to make certain is to ask for and review the bank reconciliations on a monthly basis. You know, you might be getting bank reconciliations, but if you don't have all the information with you, you're not reviewing the checks. Um, that go along with the bank statement, if you're not reviewing the bank statement, maybe you're not even receiving the bank statement, you're just receiving a, a bank reconciliation report. <clears throat> you know, without all the information, it's tough to review and to have a good feeling um, that the amount of cash that you're showing on the balance sheet is the actual, you know, reconciles to the amount of cash uh, that's in the that's in the bank account. And one of the things that's, that's probably the most important with reviewing bank reconciliations is that the first time you see that reconciliation is not at your board meeting. Um, there's very few people that can look at a bank reconciliation in the, the five minutes that it takes you know, in your board meeting to go through it. Um, typically, you should have at least a day to see it, to process the information, to review what's there. That way it gives you time to, to look into any questions and then at the meeting, um, that's where those type of uh, questions can be addressed. Uh, so in summary, uh, when you prepare a bank reconciliation, you're trying to make sure that the amount of cash that you're showing in your accounting software reconciles to the amount of cash that's shown on the bank statement. You know, there's there's almost always going to be differences. Uh, there's generally going to be uh, a few timing differences between uh, outstanding checks, deposits in transit. Um, there's generally going to be some omissions. There's going to be uh, bank fees. Um, you know, there might be some missing receipts, uh, interest paid to the account. Some of those things are going to show up on the bank statement that uh, you didn't record in the in the cash account detail um, you know make sure that you have all the information um, before you get started you're going to need the bank statement you're going to need the cash account detail make sure you do it for every single cash account not just for the operating account you know if you have separate accounts for payroll uh, building expense whatever make certain that you do it on every account every single month um, and one of the important things to remember about doing this is that these, this process is in place 
to protect both the organization and the people that are doing the books. And so it creates a clear and concise detail of why there are discrepancies. So, so if anyone has to go back a year or two years, there's no question as to what happened. And then at the end of the process, it's important to make the necessary journal entries. Um, generally, it's going to be more than uh, more than one journal entry. Um, those journal entries are important because it's not just the cash account that's that's going to need the journal entry. There's going to be uh, you know accounts receivable, uh, interest expense, bank fees, interest income. You know, it's going to hit both the balance sheet and the income statement. So it's important to make sure that uh, once the bank reconciliation is complete, that those journal entries get posted uh, and get posted in the proper period as well. Um, make sure those get posted uh, in, this, in this case in the month of June. So when you go into July, you'll have a, a accurate, um, you have an accurate view of, of the cash account balance as well as uh, the other accounts that were affected by the changes that you needed to make.